the battle royale genre took the gaming world by storm. Seemingly blowing up out of nowhere, the battle royale genre was the new gold rush for the gaming industry, at least until recently, where the battle royale is probably getting replaced. But I'm getting too far ahead of myself. First off, where did battle royales even come from? In the year 2000, a Japanese film called Battle Royale was actually introduced, which was an action thriller that primarily pitted many people together to fight to the death for an ultimate winner. Now, Western mediums have consistently adopted Japanese ideas and put them into new properties, and we've seen that throughout history with the impact of movies like Akira or Ghost in the Shell. Now, Battle Royale wasn't much different, inspiring tons of books and movies including Hunger Games, which later turned into Minecraft Hunger Games, which was the first form of a Battle Royale. While the movie Battle Royale came out in the year 2000, the Hunger Games book was written in September of 2008, and the first Minecraft Hunger Games was June 9th, 2012. Now, one of the first legitimized games centered around the Battle Royale concept was Z1 Battle Royale in H1Z1. Now, while definitely a popular game, it was nowhere near as popular as the game that inevitably replaced it, aka Player Unknown Battlegrounds PUBG. Now, this was the game that kicked off Battle Royales and made it what it was today. A game that was entirely built around the Battle Royale framework. In fact, that was basically all it was. That was actually my first experience with the Battle Royale, someone who consistently played Player Unknown, even though the game was frustrating, laggy, had a lot of bugs, and you consistently died to the zone. It didn't matter, the game was so much damn fun, and there was really nothing like it that I played up to this point. Now, PUBG went absolutely ballistic on Twitch, and it spawned a lot of top careers for many of the streamers that you might know today. And I don't want to understate just how big this game was, because it was massive, and it seemed like it was going to be the new dominant force for the foreseeable future although in reality it really just became the groundwork for the inevitable biggest game that we have ever seen on july 21st 2017 fortnite finally released and it was a little bit rocky at the start but as the game started to become more and more polished as more and more people started to jump upon the game this game reached peaks that we have never ever seen in gaming period this was a tie that was so huge that it basically eclipsed everything we've ever seen before and fortnite blew up careers and streaming it it blew up players, it created entire businesses, and Fortnite really just became the biggest game that we've ever seen, bringing everyone into the fold. Because Fortnite was the perfect catalyst for the battle royale genre, and because of the age-appropriate nature of the game, everyone could play it, and it basically brought young and old, it had pretty much something for everyone, and because of how simple the game was, it was also much easier to transition to other platforms as well, and eventually it ended up on every platform that you could possibly think of. And so Fortnite took the world by storm, dominated everything, became a massive esport with pros like Booga winning millions of dollars, and as someone who used to play Fortnite a lot, especially back in the early days of Fortnite, I think that regardless of how you feel about the game now, I think there was at one point a time when you had a blast playing Fortnite. I think every gamer has had at least some moment in history where Fortnite was the funnest thing that you could play, period, and you were a bit addicted to the game. Now, all good things must come to an end, or not really an end, but Fortnite has been on the steady decline. Sure, the game has been constantly changing, but with changes come people being dissatisfied with those changes and the direction of where fortnite should go is definitely up for debate a lot of people want it to be more competitive some people want it to be more tailored to the casual audience and some people want it to morph and change into something entirely different which we've seen to an extent with a lot of the additions to fortnite now the wave that fortnite created definitely started a gold rush of sorts especially because everyone wanted to get into that slice of the pie especially with people leaving fortnite they wanted to offer different options and we saw an explosion of a lot of battle royale concepts most of which not working at all in fact the vast majority of them didn't work at all all of them were flashes in the pan trying to obviously cash in on the concept without really nailing the formula and i think that really the only games that actually hit the formula somewhat okay was call of duty's Warzone, nailing it fairly well and apex legends these are the two games that i think actually nailed the formula at least to an extent and regardless of how you personally feel about these games these are definitely 
success stories and they utilized the battle royale genre to make a game that people actually enjoyed bought stuff for and liked but outside of those established titles these games kind of fizzled out and the battle royale genre right now is in a state of staleness and lack of innovation now perhaps some studios are working behind the scenes trying to develop an amazing battle royale but i think that a lot of studios are actually deciding to transition away from battle royales the battle royale genre came and went but there are further modifications that can be done to the battle royale formula that could turn it into something with much more depth replayability and honestly maybe even a higher peak than fortnite and while battle royales aren't dead in the water the new battle royale replacement at least for developers and the future of games is probably here and that's the extraction shooter genre now first off you might not even know what an extraction shooter is but let me name a couple that you might know the division one survival mode tarkov the hunt showdown dark and darker frontier a combination of pvpve so player versus player versus artificial enemy and a combination of exploring looting trying to survive and extract or fight somewhere in the middle where players get dropped into a map and they have to go complete objectives look for loot explore the area and a lot of the time they would intersect with other players naturally you're gonna run into other players and be forced to fight even if that's not your primary objective that doesn't mean that it won't happen in fact it commonly will so instead of giving you the objective of fighting each other and that's the ultimate goal is to be the last one standing this gives you other goals and it could be very diverse goals but fighting is a natural result of you just existing in the same area and the fight for loot and the fight to survive now, if you're looking at all the games that I mentioned and you're like, whoa, whoa, I don't like any of those games. Like, why would I be interested in an extraction shooter? Especially if you're someone that is a battle royale gamer or an FPS gamer, you're like, what the heck? I'm not interested in those at all. But I want you to consider that that is almost very similar to the H1Z1, maybe even PUBG, or maybe even Hunger Games period of time of battle royales, where that is the previous established titles. None of them are made by AAA studios, and many of them play into the ultra hardcore aspect of extraction shooter which is there no matter what to an extent but nowhere near what you would experience in something like tarkov but regardless of whether you're convinced on extraction shooters or not triple a developers are there are extraction shooters being developed by ubisoft sega and the most recent one marathon that is being created by bungie themselves the first new ip since destiny now this is actually a really big deal with an extraction shooter because unlike a battle royale where it's actually fundamentally easier to make a game centered around the concept of a battle royale as a smaller studio an extraction shooter almost needs the big triple a budget for a lot of reasons and the biggest one is the concept of ai or artificial intelligence within these games remember it's pvpve e is a big part of that which is enemy generated characters that basically fight back there are things on the map there are obstructions that you have to fight that are not just players and the reality of it is in a lot of these other extraction shooter games that exist right now like tarkov for instance the scavs are a bit brainless most of the time these smaller studios don't have access to complex ai and their only way to make enemies harder is just to turn up the aimbot which is not a very intuitive or engaging way to actually make enemies real obstacles in a game they should feel real they should feel part of the world and the environment if a big concept in extraction shooters is the exploration and the search for loot you have to feel like you're on an adventure and you have to feel that you're going through the jungle or traveling an alien world and you're meeting real enemies that live there real things real parts of the environment and if your ai is bad it doesn't feel immersive so the fact that ai is not only improving at a rapid rate in the real world a bit scary but true and AAA developers have access to the money needed to improve ai this is a big deal for extraction shooters much more than it was with battle royales and we even see that still Still, two out of the three battle royales that succeed today are still made by big budget studios. I think another aspect that AAA can bring and one of the biggest reasons that people have been avoidant of extraction shooters up to this point is the polish. And really, extraction shooters are like some of the least polished games that you could imagine. They have problems with looting, there's problems with bugs, there's problems with pretty much anything you could think of, it's there. I mean, I'm someone who has consistently played Frontier, Tarkov, and many of the other extraction shooters and none of them feel very mainstream at all. A lot of them are hard to assess. They 
they have huge learning curves and i think really it comes down to the fact that these games require a ton of work like there's so much depth in a game when you add extra maps when you add all this customizable loot when you add the ability to run into real players and enemies there's so much to make and there's so much to design and there's so much to bug test and bug fix that a small studio is going to have a very very hard time making a polished extraction shooter they can either never expand the game ever and just focus on keep polishing like the small slice they have which is going to get their game killed or they could expand and just kind of accept a really really rough around the edges product and at least people play it though so this extraction shooter concept that is kind of a derivative of both survival games rpgs mmos and battle royales all combined getting added that extra layer of polish from a triple a studio is actually such a big deal for this genre and I actually think this is really important because right now for Battle Royales, I don't really think there's any direction you could go that basically improves the formula for everybody. Sure, you can make a Battle Royale with a lot of movement. You could make a Battle Royale with some insane graphics. You could add different gimmicks here and there, but some people are going to like and dislike them. They're not objective improvements to the games. They're more of a desirability from certain sets of audiences. But with the extraction shooter genre, the improvement to polish, the improvement to AI, and the improvement improvement to accessibility is pretty much accepted by everyone at least everyone's saying that doesn't have 5,000 hours in Tarkov and landmark I'm looking directly at you <laughs> no I'm just kidding but the question that comes to people's minds is are extraction shooters just a flash in the pan is it going to be something that comes and goes or is it something that's here to stay and i think where extraction shooters really win big is the sky's the limit for what you could do in a shooter like this the replayability is insane imagine exploring a full diverse world with environmental things animals the lifelike nature of what you would find actually adventuring and there's loot and there's goodies but there's also that unpredictable nature of real people scary enemies that actually are smart and act like they are part of the environment this creates a infinite replayability where the map could be so broad and diverse and wide that the sky's the limit for this genre and i think it's only a matter of time until it becomes the new crowd favorite in replacing battle royales